Hey guys, my name is Mitsumio, and today, if you're not aware, a brand new Battlefield 1 trailer has just released that not only looks incredible, but it's also given us a lot of new information on how horse combat's gonna work and the introduction of the new Elite classes. Elite classes has been something that people have been speculating about ever since the first trailer release, but now we're finally getting some concrete details. And so the first one that we're gonna take a look at is the new Century class, who is strapped with thick armor plating and essentially moves as a human tank using a watered, cooled machine gun. We get a glimpse at him in the trailer where a bolt action rifle snipes him in the face and it looks like it doesn't do any damage whatsoever. It just does a glancing blow, he just kind of shrugs it off and he's good to go. I have a suspicion that the normal ways that you take out infantry are not going to apply to the sentry. He is going to be essentially a human tank as they describe him and you're going to have to use unconventional means. Now the downside of this guy is that he doesn't have access to a gas mask leaving him very vulnerable to gas grenades. I would also imagine that he's going to be very susceptible to anti-tank weapons. I know that might not make sense, why would you want to use anti-tank weapons against an infantry player, but I have a feeling that that's going to be one of the most effective ways at taking this guy out. Regardless though, this guy sounds incredibly powerful. Maybe he's also going to be vulnerable if you shoot him in the legs, if you see a couple of pictures of him, uh, parts of his body are not fully covered by this armor, and so maybe you're just going to have to shoot at him differently compared to other infantry combat, but in general, I have a suspicion that this guy is going to be a force to be reckoned with and if you're not prepared for this guy he is going to do a number on your team. Now moving on over to the flame trooper who has surprisingly access to a flamethrower I imagine that they are going to be the best anti-infantry class in the game hands down at least in close encounter combat. If you've ever seen a video of a flamethrower being used in real life they are terrifying they're brutal and they're incredibly effective when you are able to close the gap on the enemy. If this is supposed to be an elite class, which only I'm assuming a couple of people are going to be able to use on the battlefield, I would only imagine that they are going to be terrifying in those types of situations. Now, the downside of this guy is that he's going to be susceptible to long range combat. Pretty much anyone at a distance is going to have a massive advantage because flamethrowers are not bolt action rifles. He's not indestructible. You will be able to drop this guy at long range, uh, but also he's going to be a little bit slower compared to all the other classes because he does have a gas mask obstructing his vision and I'm assuming slowing him down down as well, at least according to this article. And so as long as you're able to keep the distance, you're going to be just fine against this guy, but as soon as things get intimate, as soon as things get into close encounter combat, the flamethrower is going to be terrifying to fight against. The last elite class that we get a look at is called the Tank Hunter. He has access to the 1918 Tank Guver, and according to the article, it is an absolute beast of a weapon that can lay waste to enemy infantry and vehicles at a distance. Now his big weakness is that with all of this firepower, and I imagine that this is probably going to be one of the most powerful weapons in the game at dispatching of vehicles at a distance, uh, his biggest weakness is that he has to be prone. This of course is going to leave him vulnerable to sniper fire, it's going to leave him vulnerable to anyone who realizes where he's at, but I can only imagine that if you're able to get a nice sniper perch, that you're going to be able to just decimate every single vehicle that you come across, especially if they're not expecting it. Now a lot of you are probably thinking right now, okay, this sounds awesome, I can't wait to get my hands on a flamethrower, but they sound blatantly overpowered. Like how in the world are they going to be able to balance this out to all of the other classes in the game? Well, I don't think anything's been confirmed right now, but I imagine that these are either going to be something that you're going to find on the battlefield. They're going to be battle pickups like we had with Battlefield 4, or they're going to be something where if you take an objective, you can spawn as this character like they have with the spawn system with all the other vehicles in the game. I imagine it's going to be one over the other. There has been some concerns that DICE is now turning this into Star Wars Battlefront where everyone races to become one of these heroes because why wouldn't you want to? As soon as you become Darth Vader, your kill death ratio skyrockets because you are blatantly overpowered. I don't think that's going to be the case in Battlefield 1. As long as DICE doesn't go crazy with it, I imagine that they are going to be more powerful than your average infantry because they are the elite classes, they're meant to be more powerful, but I don't think it's all of a sudden going to turn you into a god. My guess is that it's going to be very similar to the way that tanks work. You spawn on in and you now all of a sudden become more powerful. You are better. I mean, you're going to be able to 1v1 in infantry, no problem whatsoever, but that doesn't turn you into an immortal god that can never die. You do have weaknesses, and while you might be slightly more powerful, you're not going to be able to win the game single-handedly. Same is going to be true for these elite classes. Of course, I might be completely off base. Maybe they're going to be blatantly overpowered and just ruin Battlefield 1, but I don't think that's true. My guess is that they're going to be a resource that people fight over. There'll be these side objectives, and they're just going to add in more 
more variety to the game and hopefully enhance the game for the better. Now, easily my favorite aspect of the trailer is that we finally get to see horse combat in action, and my god, does it look incredible. As soon as you spawn in on one of these horses, you become the new cavalry class and have access to different gadgets and weapons that you normally wouldn't have access to. Same is true for all of the vehicles, or most of the vehicles in Battlefield 1. If you're not aware, if you spawn in onto a tank, you become the tank driver and you have your own unique loadouts. You, if you spawn into a plane, same is true, you become the pilot with your own unique weapons and different gadgets. It looks like that's going to be the same with the cavalry class. Now, while we don't know every single detail about what this class is going to have access to, we do know a couple of things, and probably one of the coolest is that you're going to be able to throw anti-vehicle grenades and take out tanks while on horseback. The way they describe it in the article is that you're going to be able to run circles around these mechanized tanks and take them out no problem. Now, they don't say how many grenades you're going to have access to, but they do say more than one. That is more than you get as an infantry player and so I'm imagining that is if you customize your loadout appropriately you can turn a horse into an anti-tank vehicle. It may require more skill, it's going to require more finesse than maybe some of the other ways of taking it out, but if you are successful it sounds like you're going to be able to run circles around tanks constantly throwing these anti-tank grenades at it and getting that nice fireball explosion. That sounds amazing. You're also going to be able to use high-powered rifles, one in the back of the horses, to take people out at medium to long range, and as soon as things get a little bit closer, you can either just run them over with the horse itself, or use your saber to chop their head off. I, I can't wait. I cannot wait to get my hands on these horses and cavalry charge straight into the enemy line because this sounds like one of the coolest goddamn things that you're going to be able to do in Battlefield 1. The horses are not immune to damage though. You can kill them. They may have a lot more health, significantly more health than the average infantry, but if you put enough bullets into them, they will eventually get taken out. What we don't know yet is what will happen if you do kill the horse but not the player on top of it. I mean, if someone is riding as fast as they possibly can and all of a sudden their horse just kind of falls out from under them, they're probably not going to survive that, and so either I would guess that they're going to just die outright if, if someone kills your horse, or you're going to take a significant amount of damage. It remains to be seen, but you do need to know that these amazing creatures will be dying on the battlefield. And um, then finally, DICE has said that these are not going to feel like motorcycles, they're doing their best to really make this feel like a horse, and that it's going to be more of an extension, but it's also going to be a creature that's going to do its own thing. If you charge at a wall, it's not going to just fly right on into it and kill itself. It will try to veer away or jump over the wall. If there is a canyon and you try to run off the canyon, it's not going to do it. It's, it's going to stop. It's not going to commit suicide because a horse isn't that stupid in real life. And so while you're going to have a lot of control over it, it is going to have a mind of its own, at least in some situations. What remains to be seen, though, is how are the horses going to feel when we finally get our hands on the game? DICE has announced that the open beta is going to happen on August 31st, and we will be able to play on the new map that we see in the trailer and have access to horses in the elite classes, but my worry is, is that horses are really hard to program in video games. It is not an easy task. Just look at over The Witcher 3, and while the game looks incredible, it looks like they've gone all out in the animation department, I'm really hoping that they don't feel clunky and, and cumbersome and just not responsive the way that they should. I, I trust DICE, I think they're going to do a really good job with it, but it is one of my biggest worries. All in all though, this trailer was spectacular. I didn't think I could get any more excited for Battle of the One, but after seeing the horses finally in action, the new classes, the elite classes, August 31st cannot come soon enough. Uh, but yeah guys, that is what it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Give me your thoughts on the trailer. Did you love it? Were you disappointed? Can you not wait to get your hands on the horses and ride them into combat? Let me know down below. Uh, but yeah, until tomorrow, have a good one, and take it easy.